Lavishly they give to the poor. Their prosperity shall endure forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we are celebrating today a saint particular to our Norbertine order today, Saint Gilbert, one of our abbots from the 12th century. So the prayers and the readings today will be special and particular for our Norbertine saint. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you called your abbot, St. Gilbert, away from the riches of the world so that he might enter into the way of poverty. Grant, we beseech you, that entering upon the way of humility, we may strive to serve our brothers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Whatever gains I had, these I have come to consider as loss because of Christ. More than that, I even consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For this sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my, any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies ahead, but straining forward, to, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in God's commands. Their descendants shall be mighty in the land, generation upright and blessed. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. All goes well for those gracious in lending who conduct their affairs with justice. They shall never be shaken. The just shall be remembered forever. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. They shall not fear an, e an ill report. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting the Lord. Their hearts are tranquil without fear till at last they look down on their foes. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. Lavishly they give to the poor. Their prosperity shall endure forever. Their horn shall be exalted in honor. Happy the man who is merciful and lends to those in need. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Jesus Christ, for our sake, became poor, even though he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. The more we live by faith, the more we understand truly the value of the things of this world as compared to the value of the things to come, the spiritual treasures that await us in heaven. And even the spiritual treasures that we possess and make good use of here on this earth. We know that heaven we are longing for, we are striving for all the wonderful ways in which those blessings will be ours for all eternity. But even here on earth, God gives us a beginning of a participation in that life of glory. And in faith, when we value the things of this world rightly, and when we compare them to the spiritual riches which God provides for us even here and now, then we see the world and ourselves and everything quite differently. This was the experience that our saint today had in an extraordinary way, St. Gilbert, who was very gifted wealthy, courageous. He was a knight who went on one of the crusades in the early 12th century. He had a wife and daughter, in many ways had everything that the world could offer. And in fact, he was very strong in his faith as well. He saw his participation in the crusade as a holy endeavor, and certainly it was. And he saw his family life as giving a beautiful example to the church and to the world. And for all these blessings that he had, when he returned from the crusade, he had this profound spiritual experience where he looked at his life and he looked at what he could still do. What more could he have done for the Lord? And he made this rather radical decision inspired by God's Holy Spirit. He decided for himself and in fact, consulting with his wife and daughter for them as well as a family all of them, decided to give up everything and enter monastery and convent. Really a powerful example of that witness of faith when we really appreciate the value of spiritual things, some, as is the case, particularly at this point in the church's history, the Middle Ages was a time where this was a fairly common st story, right? Those, you know, who had wealth and power and influence gave it all up and entered convents and monasteries and became monks and priests and sisters and nuns. A beautiful witness, again, to that priority of the things of the Spirit, the treasures of heaven. And he became an abbot, as we celebrate today, in one of our monasteries there in Europe, and had a wonderful and a beautiful example after his really, you know, deep conversion of a very generous kind and loving abbot to his community who worked very, very generously for the poor. This is why we've made reference to the fact that he embraced poverty and humility and in service to others. His monastery became known as one of the great centers of Catholic stewardship, caring for the poor and the sick and feeding hundreds of people each and every day. Beautiful and powerful example. His wife and daughter also went on to enjoy the many blessings of their religious life. In many ways, their example, too, was an inspiration to many other women who joined our order at that particular point. So the decision of even just one 
or in this case, the family of three. That decision inspired by the Holy Spirit to really give up the things of this world for the goods that are of higher value was a tremendous inspiration to many in their own time and in their life. That is still an inspiration that we benefit from. That is why we celebrate St. Gilbert today. And in all of the ways in which we in our lives perhaps continually need to reevaluate how we value things, the things of this life, how we truly long for even more and more each day, the treasures of heaven, the things that are really of value, as we continue to use the spiritual benefits that God has given to us, faith, hope, love, courage, our witness to the faith, our defense of the faith, everything that we are praying for and working for, conversion of minds and hearts, that everyone will welcome the truth of the gospel, all of these realities. When we see, again, just the example of St. Gilbert and his wife and daughter today, again, a powerful, powerful witness. And may our witness also, though we don't have to imitate every detail in the story, I'm not encouraging all of you to just give up everything and uh, or join a monastery or a convent, though, you know, in your prayer, if that's something you feel inspired to do. But we know that that reality, again, is a beautiful example. And may we each in our own way and in our own vocations continue to humble ourselves, to be poor in spirit so that we might be really truly rich in the things that matter most, the things that we value in faith, the things, the many blessings that God gives us each and every day. Let us pray. With humility and confidence, let us now present our petitions to our loving God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, that by the strength of the Holy Spirit, they may continue to preach the truth, goodness, and beauty of our Catholic faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of all nations, may they also be guided by God's Spirit as they work to bring true peace and justice to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the sick and suffering and for all those who care for them, that they may be strengthened and consoled by God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our parish community, that we may continue to grow strong in our faith, that the light of Christ may guide us in all our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, especially for the repose of the soul of Fernando Dizon, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may rest in peace in the glory of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Loving God, listen to these prayers we place before you today and answer them according to your will and in your kindness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously look upon this offering, O Lord, and awaken in us that charity which radiated from your Son, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gilbert, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen, I say to you that you who have left all and followed me will receive a hundredfold and possess eternal life.
Let us pray. Grant, Lord, that we who have received the bread of eternal life may by our words, prayers, and actions do all that we are able to provide for the needs of our brothers. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.